Well, today from the Roberts Rule Study Group, we have, uh, Joan Milliman is here today along with Anthony Liberatore. Nice to have you here today. And we are gonna, we got some slides we're gonna put up. And really you're talking about, uh, you know, different kinds of uh, procedures here today. And uh, postpone it and things like postponing something, a motion. Uh, right? That's, that's kind that's of correct. the gist of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So first of all, if, um, if you want to take a vote uh, and um, you want to take it off of the floor, take it off the motion, uh, you, tell us about postponing and how does that procedure go about? I know we got uh, some slides we're going to show. OK, yeah. Well, Ken, during a meeting, uh, you may have a situation where you have, for instance, a guest speaker coming in, mm -hmm. and the agenda on the item ahead of the speaker, you anticipate maybe take a long time. And so you make a motion, and mm -hmm. the way you make a motion is, according to Robert's rules, you you wait until the person ahead of you has stopped speaking, then you gain, uh, you, you ask, request a floor, and the way you do that is in our situation is raise your hand. And then once the chair recognizes you, you have the floor. And mm -hmm. then you would simply say, Madam Chair, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to postpone item seven on the agenda that talks about energy projects. I'd like to postpone it to 11.30 AM. And then, of course, uh, the chair would uh, should properly rephrase that for the for the assembly, whoever it is. Then, in order for that to be approved, you need someone in the assembly to offer a second. Mm -hmm. And a second is really, you don't have to, if you want to second something, you don't have to necessarily agree with the motion, but by seconding it, you're going to get it on the minutes of the meeting so it can be archived. So the same question comes up later on and will already have been okay. archived. Then you take a majority vote, and if you get a majority vote, and before that, the the chair should restate the motion uh, precisely, so it gets in the records uh, okay. uh, correctly, and then, the, and then he it becomes then the motion becomes the property of the assembly. Okay. okay another thing that can be done to slow down or to c reconsider the motion, maybe it's too complicated or it needs to be reworded and it needs further study. So we refer it to a committee for further action. And that too requires a motion and a majority vote. So if you wish to refer a motion, you say, I move to send this motion to committee for further consideration. And then you also give the committee instructions about when they should report back mm -hmm. on the motion. And uh, perhaps they have to rewrite the the motion itself, and so that would be for further study. Okay, all right, and uh, you mentioned you can postpone it to the next meeting or a time, and then the uh, referral. Uh, how about um, how a committee, you know, moving on to committee members, and uh, uh, how are they chosen? Well, in, the, in our situation here, committee members, any, any person here in Laguna Woods that's a, a resident can offer, offer themselves up uh, to be uh, on a committee okay. or be a director. And then each president in, in our situation here in Laguna Woods, the president of the one of the three corporations, that's GRF, Third United, at the beginning of their term, they fill out they appoint committee members to okay. standing committees. And that's the, uh, the way it's done. OK, and then of course there's special committees. Right, and they're, they're created for a particular purpose. OK. And they are done when the, when the action is completed. Mm -hmm. So they are very temporary, and they simply report back to the main committee. OK, and of course there's the ad hoc Committee. Those are called, yes. Those are they also called subcommittees? Sometimes, yeah, all okay. of that. They're, they're just little study groups, but they are tiny committees. You know, okay. Very often. Too. And an ad hoc committee, as we've seen here, for instance, Clubhouse 2. Right. Maybe a few months, it, it may be a couple years. Right, Am and I once right? that ad hoc committee, the ad hoc committee will be finished mm -hmm. when Clubhouse 2 is finished. 
and they will no longer be needed. Right. That's it. So sometimes they can get pretty complicated like that. Right, exactly. And I've even seen, if I'm not mistaken, where you may actually have within an ad hoc committee, uh, maybe even a subcommittee, a subgroup yeah. that's looking at a, you know, maybe like in Clubhouse too, there's a subcommittee that's right. looking strictly at the, the kitchen equipment or something kitchen like that. Kitchen equipment, design, uh, right. landscape, all of that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And moving on to um, board. Uh, board members, and uh, tell us a little bit more about how uh, that how that kind of relates to everything else as far as committees and such and the organizational sure. part of that. A board is usually the the highest governing authority of some organization. Right. Whether it's a cor whether it's a major corporation. Tony's, or, Tony's going yeah. to tell you about the different boards, yeah. but here in the village we have several boards. Uh, we have United third and mutual 50 uh, which are all boards for the housing units mm -hmm. and then uh, beyond that we have the GRF board uh, which is elected by members of those first three boards mm -hmm. and that GRF is or is in charge of the uh, all of the f facilities and right. amenities and now we have a new VMS board mm -hmm. which are uh, is are elected from the, again, from the boards. In our case, we have three representatives from third, three from GRF, and three from United. So it's a nine member board. And they represent the cell phone, new cell phone professional management company for Laguna Woods, mm -hmm. Village Management Services. Right. And of course, and Anthony Tony, of course, is, is on that. Is the president of the VMS board. So talk about also independent boards. Go ahead, Tony. Well, an independent board is, uh, by definition, is a board uh, that doesn't, that it's votes on issues by itself and does not take votes from like the general membership. For instance, when we have one of our uh, monthly meetings, the 11 board members vote on issues. Mm -hmm. They don't take votes from uh, the people. Right. And in, the, in a legal definition, independent board is a corporate board that has a majority of outside directors who are not affiliated with the, the top uh, executives of a firm. Now, the way we practice it is, is that the board of 11 sits there and goes through the business of the, uh, of the corporation and doesn't take votes, you know, from the uh, assembly, the, mm -hmm. the people who come to attend the meeting. So. That's what a private uh, independent board is. And then uh, we have uh, other boards that may be uh, subordinate to mm -hmm. the main board. And those boards would be appointed by uh, the assembly, the main assembly, and given their mission uh, to do. And they are subordinate to the main board and okay. report everything they do. And they make recommendations, but not resolutions or laws, and report back to the main board. So that's what our committees do, basically, yes. are subordinate boards. So, right. Yes. Okay. And there's a, one other strange board, uh, which we don't have. Sometimes uh, a board so large that uh, its members are spread out geographically okay. across the country. And so, therefore, they will have an executive committee, which is often made up of the officers, mm -hmm. president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. And in between the large meetings, they act for the board. Now, one other thing people might get confused about is the difference between an executive board and executive session. Mm -hmm. We have executive sessions here, and they're called closed sessions. And that means that the board meets without the public present in order to solve or consider problems on personnel and contracts, private matters. Mm -hmm. That's Okay. Right. And as you were talking about um, on an executive committee, which we don't have here, a very, very large international corporation who uh, people who sit on the board may be from other large corporations right. spread out throughout the country, if not nowadays yeah. throughout the world, uh, may only meet together every quarter or something like that. So in between that time, the executive committee uh, yes. serves. Yes, right. and does right. the day-to-day -day business. Right, exactly. And then um, moving on, as far as um, procedures and boards, large and small. Well, procedure is actually 
you know, we, we kick this word around a lot in our meetings here, process. And procedure is, uh, for the boards, is, it's a progress. It's a mm -hmm. series of steps that facilitates the work uh, of dealing with business for the organization that you represent. And, and part of that procedure then, when the board convenes, and after the ceremonies, uh, pledge allegiance or whatever, roll call, then a director or a member of the board uh, will, in, in our case, we use raising of the hands, we uh -huh. don't do voice or anything like that, would get the floor, or be recognized by the chair, has the floor, and then the way we do business is we take care of business by, by offering a motion. Okay. And that's the procedure. And then there are rules in Robert's Rules. There are different kinds of motion. There's mm -hmm. a main motion. There's subordinate motions which are uh, it, that help us dispose of the work proposed in the main motion. Right. Oh, I wanted to say something that the larger, our regular board meetings are pretty much pretty formal, mm -hmm. basically. We follow Robert's Rules more closely there than we do in committees. Right. Uh, for example, somebody could speak more than once on the same subject mm -hmm. in a committee, whereas in Robert's, on the, the larger boards, you can only speak twice. Okay, and now moving on to uh, the validity of board actions. It must be agreed by a more majority vote at a regularly scheduled meeting. Correct? Right, and we are very strict about making things regularly scheduled. Right. They have to be posted four days in advance mm -hmm. to announce that the other committee or the regular board meetings are being held. And they can't do business unless they have a quorum, which is a majority of board members in the in office, and unless there's different rules set up. Right. Um, sometimes the, that, that happens. Um, the other thing that has to happen in order for business to be carried out is that for every motion that's made, and Tony said this once, and I'll say it again, the president has to, or chair has to repeat the motion in order to put mm -hmm. it in the record. Right. And therefore it becomes a part of the minutes, but it's not until he or she states it that it is a part of the minutes and can be archived. Right, exactly. I want to mention, um, that uh, your next meeting of your uh, study club is going to be coming up on Saturday, June 11th. That's at 9 a.m. And uh, it's actually going to be up in uh, Anaheim, up on Garden Grove Boulevard, right? Right. right. So if uh, people would like to go, if you'd like to carpool, please call Mike Straziuso at 949-830-8717. So you're meeting all the way up there. You meet with other Robert's Rules people? Or, yes. Uh, okay. We, we have a, a group. It's called Robert's Rules Study Group. Okay. It's the same. We're a club here and a group there. Okay. <laughs> all right. the same group goes back and forth. They travel back and forth. All right. Very good. So again, that's coming up on June 11th. If you uh, would like to go and you need transportation, please call Mike Straziuso at 949-830-8717. Tony and Joan, thank you. Thank you. Always good to see you. Good to see Take you. Take care. Take care. You look Thanks. good. All right. Thank you. So do you. We will be back. Thank you so much. So.